so one of the projects that kind of interconnect for us is I got um, a few years ago started working on this becoming a tree qigong um, form, and you do a lot of work with um, nature and forest therapy. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, I've always loved nature. Um, when I was a kid and we lived near a woods, I would, anytime I'd get depressed or upset or whatever, I'd head for the wit, woods with a book or paper, pencil, write, whatever. Yes. And, and then of course, Tai Chi brings in a lot of the nature and everything we do in Tai Chi is in one way or another related to nature. And one day my sister, my older sister, who is a chiropractor, was a chiropractor, <clears throat> mentioned Shinrin Yoko. And she said, have you, have you looked into it at all? So the two of us started looking into Shinrin Yoko, which is where the Japanese did this whole study on spending time in nature and how it brings down blood pressure, how it reduces stress. And you can spend like three days in nature and go back in for the next week or so your your blood pressure is lower. They did all this study and they continued to do it. And the more I read about it, the more I thought, wow, it'd be great to be able to lead people in in just really appreciating nature. Yeah. And I found this organization called the Association of Nature and Forest Therapy. It was started um, by Amos, uh, forget the last name, but it's on his web on the website. <laughs> we'll and look it up. We'll put it. We'll put it in the notes. Yeah, we'll put yeah. it in, and, and he wrote a book, and I read his book, and then I thought, well, maybe I should go ahead and do the the course and become a forest therapy nature and forest therapy guide. It's like going back to college, Mike. Wow. It is definitely it's six months of intensive Ooh. work, and I think a lot. <clears throat> my cohort was about eleven people. We were. We were 11 and I think we were cohort number 10 out of the groups wow. that he that have been trained and in a number of people came with the understanding while well, we do this one week course intensive course where we actually go to a off site. Uh, it was a I think it was a hunting camp in Ocala it was a very interesting place and actually spent a whole week together learning about nature and forest therapy and how to be a guide. Wow. Nature or the forest is the therapist. We just guide people. Yeah. And he has a whole protocol of um, how you do it, how you go through it, and how you offer invitations. And then after that one week, we had six months whereby we had to do readings, we had to do essays, we had to do writing, we had to find our own place to do guiding and create a map of where we were going to go because you really go maximum a half mile yeah. in a tour where two to three hour time frame. So it's very slow down, just really start paying attention to, to nature. You know, it started out as forest, but you don't always have access to a forest. Yeah. So you can do this in your backyard um, or wow. you can do it in a local park. And yeah, that's pretty much how I got into that. Yeah, and it's the con it's connection, you know. So I always, you know, is working with the tree qigong. I was always looking forward to, if we ever got back to Jekyll, to do it out, you know, out on the beach. And so, you know, earlier this month, I, I led a workshop on tree qigong at one of our camps and out in the tree. And it's just like, people just like, wow, this is different. Yeah. It, it, yeah. yeah. It's, it's cool stuff. And Tai Chi fits into the right. whole nature and forest therapy, right. because like you just said, with tree qigong, you do it outside and now you start becoming connected. Yeah. 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 And you can really feel, you know how we always say, put the roots in the ground, let your feet, you know, go down into yeah. the ground. Yeah. And so the more I've studied with the whole nature and forest therapy group, you start learning about those connections that the tree roots have with each other right. and how they interface. Communic and now communicate. You start, and, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and how they support each other through their root system. And it's, yeah, they become a community and we just don't even think about that, you know, and it's like. And then with your tree qigong, we become part of their community. Yeah, we become part of the community. We we start to tap into that. And the, yeah, it's neat. 
Uh, so what is your Tai Chi origin story? <laughs> when I was a kid, um, I, I have four sisters and a brother. And uh, always, I'm the introvert. I was the introvert of the family. And so um, I decided I needed a way to get away from my sisters. And I picked up a book on yoga. Yeah. And I started doing yoga. And anytime I wanted to leave the crowd, I'd say, I'm going to do my yoga. And I'd go do my yoga and I'd be able to just kind of do that thing and then i worked uh, i when i went to work for the world bank in the 80s and i started uh, going on missions to developing countries yoga doesn't work real well you even four and five star hotels you look at the floor and go oh, i'm not getting I'm down not on that <laughs> i'm not getting so down went, floor, Richard. <laughs> not getting down on that floor. <laughs> so i went back to um to the bank and they had a really nice exercise uh, facility and programs lots of different ones i tried Taekwondo, I tried, you know, every, yeah. anyone. And one day I walked into a class that was being taught by one of our colleagues there in the bank who had come from Vietnam. He was Vietnamese and he one day said, too much stress here, we need to do Tai Chi. Wow. So once a week, he would do a class which was traditional, follow best you can. Okay. And it, we didn't have to change clothes. Right. No, we just, I would just wear slacks that day yeah. and a you know, shirt and go down and follow Quinn best I could. Took me two years to learn the 24 forms. Yeah. <laughs> right. And we do it, it's like, yeah, we'll teach you in a couple of days. Right. Come on down. It's like, yeah. right. But that's where it started. Yeah. And then it just became, it was obviously a, a, something I could travel with because you can do it anywhere, anytime. Yeah. And dressed just about anyway in kilts. Right. And right. Or in slacks and work. I mean, this is, you know, I, as you know, I work with police officers and I'm like, you're wearing tactical gear. You you can get out of the car in the parking lot. I, I know, I know. And you can do it anywhere. Yeah. So then what brings you to the Institute? And Paul. Oh, Paul. So Quinn retired and a couple of us kind of kept the program going for a while. And then um, I was living uh, south of Annapolis, um, commuting into DC. And some of the people in my community were saying, you know, how about Tai Chi, uh, you talk about it? How about you teach us? And at that point I had actually started teaching with Quinn, just, yeah. you know, beginners and before he left. And so I said, okay, fine. And so I got a bunch of people together. And, and then when, and then I thought I need more instruction. So I started looking around and there were a couple of Tai Chi teachers in the area, but none of them that I really kind of felt I, you know, that you get that feeling of, oh, this is what I want to do. The one guy, he, he would always go over and put your hand in the right place or right. it's like, no, I don't want to do that. So um, I started looking around on the web and this is back, what is it, two, 2003, I guess it was. And I found Dr. Lam with his Tai Chi Health and Wellness. And there was a, um, there was a, I can, and it was, I can certify you in a weekend. And I thought, oh, okay, let's go see what this is like. <laughs> so it was, it went from there up to uh, Philadelphia. Yeah. And J. Van Schmelt was a master trainer. And um, I think what really convinced me that this was something I should keep doing is Craig, my husband, um, had always had knee problems, always. And his, his uh, orthopedist said, when you when you need new knees, you'll know. Right. And that, he drove me up there. He, he went, he supports me on all my Tai Chi. And he drove me up there and um, he was having the hardest time sitting and standing. The knees were horrible. Yeah. So I, the first day of Jay's class, Jay um, has a, a woman in the class who is having a hard time standing and sitting on her chair and he he said okay you got to learn to talk to the little kid so as you're standing and you kind of go down to the kids level which means that you're lowering your center of gravity etc find your chair sit and then the vice versa to stand right, right. went back and I, to the hotel and i said hey here's what i learned today <laughs> And Craig did that, and he goes, wow, do all the Tai Chi you want. <laughs> yeah. 
I'll drive so, her wherever you want to go. Right. It's wherever, like, yeah. you want to go, wherever you want to go. So then I just started following Dr. Lamb's program. I went to the second workshop, which was out in Monterey at Asilomar, and it kind of just went from there. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to ST, uh, I'm doing a, you know, TCA this weekend and I get to, um, I get to do the stepwise, you know, portion of the training and that's you. I, uh, it is me. I get to, I get to, I get to teach your book. Where did, where did this come from? Yeah. And I don't even have an autographed copy, Maureen. Come on. Oh, you don't? No. Oh. Next time we get together, you're going to have to autograph my copy. I will. I will. Well, it's interesting because um, Paul and I had a number of discussions on um, the fact that I, I like to write. Yeah. And one day he came to me and he said, um, I want to redo my book because the original Tai Chi for teaching Tai Chi effectively. He said, I want to re, he said, I want to add to it. I want to um, revise it. Yeah. Would you help me? And so I said, sure. Yeah. And he sent me um, a piece of what he wanted revised. And I looked at it in, in his idea of the revision yeah. and I looked at it and I went, okay. Um, I said, I, I sent him back a revise, taking his and just small editing. And then I re-edited the whole thing the way I thought it yeah. would better for the Western world. Yeah. And I said, here, here's an example of what I can do. A little editing or a lot, which one do you want? He said, a lot. Ooh. So we yeah. spent two years. We spent two years yeah. on the book. Yeah. my life. I spent two years, <laughs> but we spent two yeah. years on yeah, yeah. and um, back and forth, uh, both in in person and also whenever he was here, and and then also you know via phone and email yeah. and all the rest of that. Um, I don't think he ever thought it would take that long, but we actually. We actually redid the 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 whole way the book came together yeah, because there were disjointed parts and yeah. we made it be much more consistent. Right. And Craig, my husband, who's an artist, did all the drawings. Oh so no way! In there. Oh wow, that is cool. All those little yeah, drawings and everything in there. Yeah. He did those, and then uh, he also took the pictures that Paul had, which were kind of all over the place, and he put them in in chronicle. Oh, chronological nice. order yeah. so it was a family affair yeah oh good yeah and we still use it today like i said i'm i'm i it'll go with me to cleveland today so it'll be fun it's a good reference but... no it's nice and i you know and i i mean and i go back to it and go yeah this yeah oh, yeah this is this is how i should be doing things safely but that's our safely <clears throat> and the interesting thing about the stepwise progressive method is yeah. when when I was looking at that to begin with, you know, the first time I read the the original book yeah. and Paul was teaching us that, I said, wow, that's the Montessori method. Yeah. I was a Montessori teacher for right. a, a number of years. And I have my Montessori degree, three to five-year-olds. That's the best age. I put that's them where you <laughs> That's the best age. That's right. It is. But it's, you know, I'll show you, you take a Montessori piece of equipment, yeah. um, uh, I like to think of the blocks with the different cylinders in it. Right. And and you show them. And then the next thing you do is they do it with you. And then the next thing is you say, now you do it. Yeah, now you play. Right. Yeah. So it's, he, it, and he told me, he told me his son went to Montessori school. Wow. So that's, so it, yeah. Could be where the connection. Where the influence is. came from. Because you're right, it is. That's, you know, you know. Uh, I'll I'll show you and then we'll do it together and then you show me. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that it's just a three, three part method. Yeah, and it's like on a story called it was a three part method. Yeah. And a stepwise progressive, but still, and it works. Yeah. Best part of being an educator. What do you like? What What do you like about being an educator? Oh, I love I love to see the light bulb moments. Yeah. You know, where folks go, oh, wow. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Um, that, and it gives me energy. After I finish a class, I am totally hyped with energy. It's amazing. I can have a down day and 
say, oh, shoot, I really don't want to teach today. Go to class and yeah. And don't you feel that, too? 100 percent. You know, it, it, no matter what it is. And then because, you know, I mean, we both know I gain as much from up front. I mean, it, you know, we should do it more in a circle. We, you know, we do that all the time. It's like, I'm just a member of the circle. All I'm doing is back to, I'm just a guy. I'm not in, I'm just a guide for this hour and I'm going to get as much as you are. And we're going to exchange information between me and you. And we're going to exchange energy between me and you. And I, you know, yeah, you can be as down as you can. And then you come out of a class. And it's like, man, that was awesome. That was awesome. Yeah. And I think, and I think that's when you know you've got a good teacher too, is that if I, I find when I go to class and I come finish with a class and it's like, wow, this is cool. I feel great. Yeah. Then. Yeah. 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 It's just like, yeah, it just changed. You. And, and yeah, I mean, just, and it's realizing, you know, the difference, I, I think we talk about good instructors. It's people who realize that, that they're just, they're in the circle and not outside. And it's like, yeah, and now I feel a part of something. As a yeah. student, I feel like I'm a part of this process, not just, you know, we've all been in a thousand lectures. It's, yeah, this, yeah, you know, I mean, it's just like, I'm not a part, I'm not even, I mean, you could give this and I don't even have to be here. And yeah, and that's exactly. not, I don't think that's education. That's, that's, there's, you know, yeah. No, that's a lecture. <laughs> yeah. And, well, I mean, we do it on Zoom and, you know, you get the camera, you know, people are just checking. It. It's like, that's all right. Well, and I think that, I mean, I love teaching on Zoom. Yeah, I, me too. I, I agree. It's um, a, a lot of people, you know, some people don't, but we can reach people that we wouldn't normally reach and people who are in the privacy of their own home. Okay. Even if they're just sitting there and watching us, there's something going on then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, even if they have their camera pointed to the ceiling, right. I mean, they're there, hopefully. Right, uh, participating. But, right. And I think it's hard to see the, and I think that's where some of our colleagues have a problem with Zoom is they can't, they can't finish the stepwise method, which yeah. is let me see what you're doing. Right. It, totally. I can't see you totally. I can see you on a 2D plane. But I mean, even, even, you know, our classes and yours, I mean, we got people in Australia, we got people all over the States. I mean, we could have never done that on a weekly two, you know, we were doing two times a week before, you know, Merle got injured, you know, and it's like, right. we could, we had people all over the place. We and, did. And it's, you know, I think that, and it's realizing, and yes, it's not, it's not let's not give up the in-person but let's realize what we can do here and yeah i mean i can work with janet and Australia. you know i can i have you know and it's like that's this is amazing you know right yeah and i have a zoom class i started during the pandemic because uh the place i was teaching at up in saint mary's of course you couldn't teach there and so we started doing things first on Facebook Live. I don't like that because you don't see the right. participants. And then, then um, because I knew Zoom, I started doing it on Zoom. And I even do the nature and forest therapy using Zoom right. um, during the pandemic and and even beyond. But the thing is, is that what happened that class that I had in St. Mary's. Now one person is in Washington D.C. One person is up in Pennsylvania. Right. One you know they've moved away <laughs> but they're still connected in that class yeah, right. Right. and right. then connected some other people with them like i had a student from when i was teaching in the bahamas when we were going there um she's now connected so you bring in people from other places and now they they all talk to each other right. <laughs> really fun and they're all checking up you know how are your grandchildren what's happening what are you doing etc so it becomes a very social part it does you know i was in new york city and we were up on zoom you know the first you know by the 17th of march that year and and you know we still down the road i still have zoom stuff that and they check in every week it's like hey you know but they're all over now and yeah yeah. You and I originally connected with living with the principles. Um, yeah, where did that come from? Where did that come out of? How did that blossom into? That was um, 
the the seed was planted in a conversation Dan and I had at one of the Dr. Lamb workshops. And we're saying, you know, we learn forms here, but we don't get much depth. Yeah. So we started talking about how can we go beyond the Dr. Lamb workshops? How can we get together and and everybody has something to share? And we found that in his you know it's not just the it's not just the the instructors but it's also the participants they all come from different parts of of learning they come with different principles and 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 there's so much that you can gain from each other and so um we put out a call to other master trainers saying hey anybody interested in doing this and i had had um, paul had come down and done a workshop at Jekyll and I knew that was a great place to, place to be yeah a nice place to be so we started saying so Stephanie Taylor came in that year um Merle came in I we said hey we're not going to be able to pay you <laughs> we don't right. think we're going to make much money right but we would right. yeah yeah so you're on your own so a number of master trainers refused because they weren't going to get paid right. but the ones who who came in and, and really counted um and and yeah that's where it, it grew the first year it happened the second year everybody says yeah let's keep it going yeah so it was it was fun we we never made much money off of it if we made any yeah. i think when we dissolved the partnership we got um the partners got like two thousand dollars a piece or something after 10 years yeah i know it's like, it, 10 years. <laughs> it's like yeah but it, that wasn't the point i mean yeah, what right. we all wasn't gained, the point. yeah we gained your friendship we gained yeah. relations with so many people that yeah. we would never have before yeah. and and got people really more interested in in more about what is tai chi qigong and how can you go deeper things that we wouldn't have learned by just straight going to. Yeah, just going through the form. I mean, even now, I mean, we, you know, during during the pandemic, we started doing seasonal chi and, you know, that's We're still, that. yeah, still, I was going to say, that still continues on, you know, and one of these days when, of course, you know, my daughter is a dancer and um, when you've seen me dance too, don't tell anyone right. about that, right. but that's all right. No, it's good. But, but you know, so we're on the road and it's like always, you know, Deirdre, they'll send out those like, oh, shoot, we're on the road. So one of these days I'm going to jump back in, but, but it still continues oh, on and people are still jumping <laughs> in. Yeah. I think they've got the date for um, the January one. So I'll make sure I know. When yeah. It is. Yeah. Make sure, make sure I get in. That'll be nice to when put it. I'll get on my calendar because a lot of times it's like, oh, shoot. I, cause it's only an hour or so. I mean, if I can even step away for an hour or so I, i'll know about it yeah that's cool yeah. um you you are a world traveler i wish <laughs> it's like oh I, we got a council class for the next three weeks i'm going to be in italy oh well how about, we could do it in italy but so yeah we're um yeah your favorite places in the world that you you've been oh gosh yeah, mostly we've traveled in Europe and Asia, not much in a little Brazil and South America, a couple other places, you know, we've gone through the Panama Canal and yeah. stopped in Raitan in Costa Rica, we did spend some time in Costa Rica stuff, so I can say a little bit of South America, but Europe a lot, when I was with the bank, I had, well, to, the first time we went over to Europe was uh, shortly after Craig and I got married. We went, uh, he finished, I finished my degree. He finished his. Yeah. And we said, we really want to go to Europe and travel. Two backpacks and a, and a tent. <laughs> Picked up a car in England and just started yeah. going. And then, and then realized we didn't want to, we had bought tickets. That was back in the Icelandic days where you could buy round trip tickets on Icelandic and yeah. we were good for a year. And we yeah. realized after a year we didn't want to come home. So we found work for the American military in Garmisch Partenkirchen at the uh, Armed Forces Recreation yeah. Center. Rough go. place to be right there at the base of the Zugspitz. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that that helped a lot. Um and you know, and we saw a lot of Europe that way. And then Craig got um 
as an accountant, he got a, a, everybody kept saying he was a budget analyst for the recreation center and everybody said, you got to get GS rating because we were living on local higher, you know, wages, yeah. which is like not much, enough to live by, but not, but not, not much. much. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so he did, and um, then he was hired by, as he likes to call it, Seeds and Weeds, Department of Agriculture. <laughs> and that's what, got us to, that's what got us to DC. Yeah. And then after a while um, in different, I went back, I had, before we went over to Europe, I'd been working as a programmer systems analyst. And then while we were over there, I got my Montessori degree. And when I came back, I looked into Montessori, but it wasn't going to be enough because we bought a house. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. So so COBOL had, was still real, ruling the world in those days. And I was a COBOL programmer and systems analyst. So six interviews in one week and job offers for all of them after seven years of not doing anything with computers right you know right time right place whatever and then eventually i ended up at the world bank international bank for reconstruction and development because i was working for a company and i kept saying i really miss the international flavor yeah after being in europe so yeah. so um that's why i went to put in my application and got hired landed on the right desk at the right time and then through that i was able to do more traveling you know, uh, Asia, yeah. a lot of Asia, Africa, stuff like that. And because Craig then left the Pentagon where he was a budget analyst and started doing his artwork, he could go with me. So it was really nice. We've done it as a team for a long time, 55 years now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Neat. And, and it, yeah, it's, it's, it's a fun story to you bring back you know, a little piece of everywhere you go, it comes back with you, I think, you know, that's been my experience as I've traveled around. There's a little piece yeah. of everywhere that you kind of bring back. Yeah. And I think one of the things that it made us both realize yeah. is you have to be open, yeah. you know, yeah. um, what is offered to you may not be what you really wanted, but it will work. Yeah. I think. Right. And I, I always say sometimes you have to take two steps backward in order to go forward. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And in a lot of I know some folks are stuck in that idea. I got to keep climbing the ladder. I got to keep climbing the ladder. But it doesn't always make you happy. And, and yeah. then you miss the, the fun stuff along the way. And, and you miss the thing. Yeah. And you miss the piece that may have gotten you farther even up if you're willing to just step out and you know just kind of ride the wave and it's like i mean it's taken me all kinds of places i would have never thought i'd ever been or done i mean meeting you i mean it's like yeah i'll go to jekyll island that sounds like fun <laughs> sure, yeah. why not what, yeah what megan i'll pick you up on the way sure i'll drive down you know 20 hours it's okay yeah yeah i mean yeah and it was just, and it's, it's you know I've, I've become friends with all of you and learned a ton from all of you and yeah just because I said, yeah, I'll pick you up on that. Yeah. Do you find, I, 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 I'm questioning whether you find that many of your, many of the friends that you feel are, are closest to you are ones who you've learned through Tai Chi? Yeah, yeah I do. Yeah. I do. And you know, it's, it's, it's the Tai Chi people. It's, it's, and, and because, I mean, much like the trees, I mean, we'll go back to kind of where we started we realize we're just sharing this moment. We're passing energy even through this, you know, even through Zoom, we're, you and I are passing energy now and we get that. And so now we're connected. And and so, you know, we can be Zoom across the world, but yet I, we've shared energy before. And I think those of us who understand this notion of sharing energy, um, and so we're we have a we have a caring for each other a a deeper caring I think so we feel for each other um, in just different ways of people who I've never shared energy with um, in that same way we just don't connect the same yeah it's a different connection that yeah. shared shared energy connection. yeah yeah and it's um <clears throat> and the other is uh, it's so working with you know currently I'm working with people and 
trauma and police officers and all of that. And and I've started to bring Tai Chi into that. And I, I actually, after I talked with Merle before I went to DC um, and using, using push hands to help process. And I'm like, well, of course, right, right. And we're just gonna push. And out of that comes stuff or doing forms comes stuff. And, you know, and I've done work with, you know, yoga and, pro, you know, for trauma-informed yoga and the same thing. You're getting, you're on the mat together and <laughs> on our own mat that I brought, not on a Florida hotel. Right? But it's like <laughs> my own mat that I clean myself. Right. But um, yeah. And it, it's about the, I think, I think the, the world is starting to click in to the energy of it. And, and, you know, I say, I mean, we can change the world. I, we, um, for World Tai Chi Day one year, pre-pandemic, Megan came up to New York City and we kind of, we said, um, I wonder if we can change an environment by just doing Tai Chi. So we did, we did all the mass transit. So we got on the train near our house. And so on the train platform, we did Tai Chi. On the train, we did Tai Chi, got to the ferry, the Tai Chi in the terminal, on the ferry, on the subways, on the stands, on the bus. So we spent all day and we found we could, just the two of us could yeah. change you know an attitude in in for a moment and we i think the whole day we did it for like eight hours by the time we made the round trip and then we, you know, we, we were in central park we went to battery park and to tai chi i think we had one person ask us to stop but everybody else would stop and they would and i think we can change the world with tai chi i really do well, and and I think that's Bill Douglas's whole idea right. that right. the world of Tai Chi. But you've just you know, that has expanded. I mean, anytime you look at the videos after a World Tai Chi Day, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing what's happening. Right. And I think people are feel. You know, it's and you. I'm sure have people in your class that come up to you afterwards and just say, "I feel so good. I love your classes. Right. I look forward to this." And you just want to say, okay, do it every day. <laughs> you can do it. Not just one hour a day, but how about do it every day? Right. Just, just five minutes. Just <laughs> five, minutes. five minutes Stop. a day. Ten minutes Stop a day. Breathe. <laughs> Open, close. <laughs> it's like just do something. Yeah. And you can connect. You don't need me. You know, I, I don't want to tell them they don't need me because then they don't come back. But I tell them, you don't need me. Yeah. You go do you. And right. And then we'll go next time we'll go a little deeper. And yeah, we'll go through this together. I agree because people go, oh, why didn't I do this 20 years ago? Yeah, I don't know. Right. Well, that's that's what I keep telling people. You know, you do it in your workplace. How many years ago? That's like 35 more yeah. now. And 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 you know, I still can cross my legs and all the rest of the kind of stuff. I right. um I ride my bike, right, you know, to class and, yeah. and things like that. And 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 people say, how do you stay so flexible? Well, it's obviously becomes it becomes part of your life. And I find that if I get up in the morning and I don't do some Tai Chi Qigong, um, the day goes to heck. Right. Yeah. You have to start with that, and then I can go from there. Yeah. Yeah. It just it it, it set you know you wakes you up. It clears your mind and. It just gives yeah, you a little it, medicine. Yeah. Emotion. Yeah. Right. And yeah. it's convincing people, you know, in you know, New York City. I well, what do you do? Oh, I teach Tai Chi. And I was like, oh, I can't, that's too slow. I'm like, you are the person, you know, that needs yeah, to come see me the most, you know, because right. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. I just I wish. But it's but I I think the world is coming in touch with it. I really do. As as Tai Chi is really kind of come out a little bit more than where it used to be even you know well there was a, f a fellow um he'd come to my classes up in in saint mary's hmm. and older gentleman he's done tai chi he had done tai chi for quite a while yeah and he said why why is yoga so big and tai chi is not yeah <laughs> we finally decided it's because they can sell stuff for yoga Right. You can get the stretch pants. You can get the, you know, you a mat. You get your you get your box. Blankets. You get the blankets and the right. Yeah. yeah, and what can you sell for Tai Chi? I got the shimmery pants. 
That's all I got. <laughs> Shimmery pants. I know, but you can wear anything, you know, and, and like Brigitte and Mike do it barefoot. So barefoot. you don't even need shoes. Well, you and I do it barefoot too, actually, because we've right. had this conversation. We don't even, I know it's, we're not supposed to, but yeah. Actually, if you're used to, you know, going barefoot, why not do it barefoot? And basically I've had students ask, and I said, if you feel comfortable on this floor, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. The only place I found I, I started doing it barefoot when we first moved down to this area. And <laughs> you got to watch out for the red ants. They're just little tiny suckers. Little tiny ants, but they're nasty. Little tiny suckers with a big bite. And <laughs> right. But it's it's connecting to the earth. I mean, this, I mean, it, you know, our yes. shoes and our socks, those are barriers to connection to the earth. And yes. when you start to grip the ground with your toes and you really start to Even if you grip the concrete out. Right. There. Absolutely. It's, it, you yeah. know, it's, it's there. Yeah. Uh, you recommended a book, right. And I, I had read it. You can see I've read it. Um, tell me about that experience a little bit, your sister. Oh, my sister. Um, she, um, her youngest, no, her second son, she has four children, three boys and a girl. And her second son, um, who is really uh, very good at languages, a lot of other things. But anyhow, he, she was living in Hawaii, then she went to Borneo, and he was ended up living in Hawaii also. And at one point, he ended up um, starting feeling really sick. It was more like flu, and the doctors kept saying flu. And I had another sister who was there. And so he was staying with her because he was so sick. And she finally said to the doctors, look, if he's got flu, we're living in the same environment and I'm not getting it. So it can't be flu anymore. And it turned out um, to be what's called rat lung disease, which is a parasite. And it's all over now. I mean, it's in Florida. It's in all kinds of places. Uh, it's a parasite that lives in the lungs of rats. That's where it grows. And then it, the rats poop it out and snails and slugs pick it up and then they um can carry it right and and also they can slime over fruits and vegetables and stuff right. and you can get a mild case well graham got a not mild case right he ended up in a coma um they had no idea what he had to begin with because the only way you can test for rat lungworm is with a spinal tap and of course nobody wants to do that, do that. yeah so uh, he was in a coma for three months. Uh, Cape came back from Borneo and basically lived with him in the hospital and tried both Eastern and Western things. She said to the doctors, I don't want to just do the Western stuff. I want to be able to do acupuncture and, you know, different things. So yeah. she went through the herbal stuff and all the rest of that. Uh, the doctors had told her she should probably pull the plug because from the MRIs, they could see it was up in the brain. The, parasite goes up there it tries to propagate and can't really do much of anything but die up there right in a human being um but she got her family together and they all she said we have to tell them what's going on so here he is in a coma and they told him what was going on and they said a tear came out of his eye right which they took as he wants to live yeah so she then ended up uh, not only being his caregiver but helping him along with my other sister i mean all of the whole family chipped in on this one helping him to regain everything he had lost he came right. out of the hospital uh, because of the trach tube you know he couldn't speak mm -hmm. he'd lost uh, functions of walking a lot of other things which you obviously read in the book yeah and she then went on to get involved in um learning more about it got a degree uh master's degree in his work for the uh, university of florida yeah. um in their lab and uh, then studying the whole thing she now goes around te um, to the different conferences because it is a worldwide problem it started in asia and then the rats carried it to hawaii and you right. know the rats problems everywhere yeah <laughs> So she just, uh, their last conference was in Spain. What's that island? One of the Spanish islands, Terra, Terra, Terra. I want to say terrific, but it's not. But it's, it's not, one of the, right. But it is terrific, yeah. but it's not the name, right. So, so she's, uh, she goes to the conference every year yeah. and does presentations. She got very involved in 
putting together education, um, a curriculum for schools. Um, and it's a, and it's apparently um, available to any school. It's and they use it for the math and science programs, whereby you learn about the rat lung room disease, but you also learn about how to kill the parasite because you can't just squash it. Right. It propagates. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So the kids learn, you know, they learn about gardening and they learn about how do you look for these snails and slugs and right. how, you know, how do you test, how do you know what's the cycle of the rat lung worm. Yeah. Um, they do math and science with it. So it's wow. Cool. Yeah. Thank you for the book recommend. I had never heard of it in all honesty until you recommended the book and I started reading it. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is wow. So I started asking people, you know, medical profession people and they're like, I'm like, you got to read this book, you know. And they should. Yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, it's here, we know it's here in Florida because there have been a number of cases. Yeah. Um, Graham's case is unusual because he's the only one that, it, and obviously Kay knows about um, all the cases where they end up in comas and like, right. he's the only one that they know that has actually survived. Yeah, and recovered, yeah. From recovered and recovered as well. He's actually in college, we're studying um, what is it called? Uh, physical uh, therapy, physical educa uh, education. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, nice. It's taking him a while. Is you know he's got sure. some some brain function. But it, the funny thing is, is that he remembered his languages. He could speak one of the. He had been spent time with my other sister in Bali, and he had gotten to know some people. And they called him when he was in the hospital, and he could speak the Balinese. Oh wow! <laughs> he <laughs> so still funny. had it there. Yeah, yeah. That the language. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Neat yeah. stuff. Okay, rapid fire rounds. Here we go. How many uh, pairs of socks do you have? Uh, too many. <laughs> and most of them are toe socks. <laughs> you can't white buy. Toe so yeah, white toe socks. Yeah, yeah. Well, because I found um, bunions, yeah. and the the big toe rubs against the other one and creates uh, the callus or whatever they called. Um, it's not a callus, it's that. Yeah. That, yeah, you know, that thing. And so if you wear toe socks, it separates your toes. But also in yoga, you know, you guys wear, yeah. you separate the toes. Mm -hmm. I mean, just as we spread our hands apart, we should be spreading our toes yeah. apart. Yeah. So toe socks, they just work well. But you can't buy just one pair. It usually comes in a three, three pack. Five. <laughs> right. It's like, oh, that's a nice pair. Oh, but I need three. Right. It's like, yeah. so, so if you get a hole in one of the pair, do you get rid of the pair or do you mix and match? Do you mix and I match? match. Yeah, good for you. Good <laughs> I mean, for it's you, like, right? Throw them both out. This one still works. This one still works. And they don't have to be the same. I mean, the kids all now, they just put socks on now and they don't match anymore. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. Um, one time for introduction for seasonal chi, um, we did... Uh, two truths and a lie to introduce each other. So give me uh, two truths and a lie and I'll see if I can pick it out. How about that? Okay. Mm -hmm. I was going to be ready for this one. <laughs> um, I play the harp. Mm. Um, I, I dislike peanut butter with chocolate. And um, I, this one's going to be a good one. And I'm really good at violin. Hmm. Now, I'm almost positive I've heard you say you play a harp. Um, yeah. um, and I'm almost positive. I've heard you say you like chocolate, but the peanut butter is what throws me off here. Peanut butter and chocolate. But I think you're a violin person. So I'm going to go, the lie is the peanut butter and chocolate one. Actually, the lie is the violin. Oh, see, I thought- <laughs> I thought you wanted to play fiddle, but- Oh, you know. see, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the peanut butter and chocolate I can take, but not- yeah. You know, it's it's not my favorite, so right. that's I get that. the truth. Yeah. But the violin, no, I can't. No. 
yeah drums recorder i bought one of those uh scotty the when we were in scotland i bought one in, no uh, ireland i bought one of the whistles the penny oh whistle. you play an irish whistle a tin whistle oh wow not good <laughs> or is it not well not well but it's all right yeah yeah oh yeah. cool tin whistle um, yeah i've been wanting because when we do when we do the guiding in the in nature or forest um, we send people out sometimes for up to 20 minutes, and then yeah. we need a way to pull them back together All back again. In. Right. And I thought the whistle would be a good one. Yeah, so nice. All right, not working really well. <laughs> It'll get there. Keep playing. Keep playing. It'll be fine. Yeah, you, what you need is a set of bagpipes, you see. I'll teach you. Oh, yeah, that would That'll really bring be people bad. in. That's <laughs> I'm not sure if I have to bring them back or scatter them. You scare them, them away. Them. Right, right, right. Yeah, don't. that's what you need, though. Um, so uh, thorns and roses, you know, so um, thorn being your biggest challenge, rose, your biggest success. My biggest success was getting the job in the Paris office, which was also my biggest challenge. <laughs> uh, every rose has its thorns. That's right. That's yes, right. Yeah, the, there were 50, they opened it up, this was at the World Bank, and there was a job for a chief administrator, which meant you took care of all the services in the building. Yeah. And there also were renters in the building in Paris, right near the Arc de Triomphe. Yeah. And there were 55 of us in my department who applied for the job. Right. And I got it. And I kind of think I got it because they narrowed it down to three of us, one of whom was um, three of us, all, all friends of mine, both others, friends of mine and guys, and I was the only female. And they, uh, the, the division chief who had to make the decision kind of is putting it off, putting it off, but I had to go on a mission to Africa and I wanted to know before I left because it was going to overlap when the decision was going to be given with my time there. And so I went into his office one, one evening and I said, uh, you know, have you gotten any closer to decision making? He said, well, there's, he said, the problem is, is we have three strong women there in that I would have to be leading. Right. And I looked at him and I said, and, and you don't think a woman can lead women? <laughs> I kind of think that's when I got that's the when job. You got the job. <laughs> I kind of think maybe that's when I got the job. Yeah. But I got to the, on my way back from the Africa trip, I stopped in Paris and I went to meet with my, the fellow I was replacing. And I met him at, in the evening at the Paris office, walk into the building and there's all this stuff hanging out of the ceilings and the place was under renovation because there had been a bombing at that building and they were renovating the whole thing. Yeah. And I'm gone. Wow, what have I gotten myself into? Because my boss said the first thing I needed to do was close that project, which right. had been running way too long and over budget. So right. that was the challenge. Yeah. Wow. Oh, cool. Um, so Earth and Cup, Earth is yeah it's us so earth what is it that grounds you hmm. Hmm. I, you know that's hard to yeah. because the question is that something physical or is that just something i think it's um i, I think it's Basically, what grounds me probably is my family, meaning not yeah. just my immediate family, which are nowhere around. Yeah. They're, you know, they're around, but they're not anywhere near me, except for my husband. But my family that I that has been created because of Tai Chi. <clears throat> Dan, for years, we considered a brother. Yeah. Um, and, and there's Sherry. She's my sister, you know. Right. So I think it's my family. It's the love I have for them. And that's really probably what grounds me. Yeah. Um, and then the cup of Earth and Cup is this the Zen notion of we are cups and, you know, we have to empty to be filled again. So what empties you as a cup and how do you fill you as a cup? Empty and fill. Hmm. 
Hmm. That's a really tricky one. Hmm. Do you really get answers to this? I do. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> yeah. Or you can say, um, you know, we can say whatever you want. I'm not sure I'm ever empty. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Keeps being filled up. And it has to do with with essentially learning. Yeah. You know, learning fills me, learning completes me. I, it's kind of one of the reasons. I mean, this where we're living now in a community, it's a continuing care retirement community called yeah. Fleetland. And it was kind of, nah, we don't want to go there type of thing. But then, and Sherry was the one who years ago, because I came to do a workshop here yeah. for her in, in getting them certified. And she kept saying, you, you really should move here. You really should move here. The more I know about this community, the more I understand that what's really important in life is that whole idea of lifelong learning. Right. And so I started calling this Fleet Landing University because you pay your tuition. Right. Essentially the place we live in. We don't own it. We're right. Paid for, we're paid for it. And now you pay your room and board every yeah. month, which is, yeah. you know, all the all the services we get, including the food and stuff like that. And then and then you have access to all the facilities, but the classes, um, the concerts we get here are just amazing. Walter Isaacson was speaking at a world affairs uh, thing down at uh, Florida State University. They simulcast it into one of the halls here because Fleet has a, a connection with the university. University, yeah. They simulcast it in. And he was talking about his new book on Elon Musk. Yeah. And and actually, they gave us books, signed copies. So I have a signed copy of <laughs> a Musk so, book. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. But it's that whole idea that that's kind of what settled me. I mean, other than knowing that the Tai Chi community that Sherry has created down here is was around. Right. I, I under, we understood that you had access to all these classes, but the more you're here, the more you're realizing it, it's it's the learning. I mean, even the follies that we did, where you learn so much about each other, yeah, uh, and where everybody came from and what they did in their previous life and wow. stuff like that. So that really that's the filling part. Good. And the more you learn about the Tai Chi, the nature and forest therapy, it's yeah. always. Yeah, that cup never empties. Good, but that's a good thing. It just continues to overflow. Uh, can't say it gets bigger. I keep having to get, a, get big, a bigger cup, bigger bottle, or a bigger cup. <laughs> I, I keep need, needing a bigger cup. Oh, cool. Well, thanks for hanging out with me for the last hour. That this has been fun. It's been fun to catch up and and see. And we got I got to come to class more often. I know. I, I and I'll I'll tell everybody. I'll make confession. Maureen said, hey, Mike, next week you're leading class. And I haven't. And he hasn't been in class since. <laughs> it's like, I'm, I'm busy. No, it's like, what are these days? And I'm, I'll, I'll lead class. So next time you see me show up, I'll lead class. I think I did come back and you didn't make me lead class, I think. You still know the 108? I still do it every once in a while. I, I'm tricky. Section three, I'm just, it's. Uh, yeah, kind of the end of section two and then section three gets iffy, but I still try to do it. And then every once in a while, I'll pull the video up and try to check it out. But I still I still play with it. I'm doing a lot more with fan right now, you know, and yeah. so I'm um, really doing that. And uh, but yeah, so it's it's fun. So I'll, I'll jump on. Keep sending me the link. I'll jump on with these days. OK, cool. Well, it's been good. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. It was fun. Thank you, Mike. This is really a great, great okay. time. Yeah, good yeah. time to catch up.